streaming. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanani and this is eBiz Chat, where it's all about business. I'm joined today by my good friend and co-host, Dr. Susan Nash. Susan, how are you? I'm fine, and we have a great guest today. Really looking forward to having her here. Yeah, who is our guest today? It's Jackie Lyles, and she is an author and consultant and coach, and she helps businesses really uh, increase their sales through pure sales magic. That sounds good. Energy and sales magic. This is good. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relay Corporation. Digital learning, corporate video, learning design, and management consulting. Visit us at www.relatecasts.net. Thanks. And we are here with Jackie Lyles. Jackie, you are in that center position of power, as we like to call it. And uh, how are you doing today? <laughs> Thank you. I'm wonderful. It's just a delight to be here today with you two. Oh, likewise. And, um, well, you, you know Susan from a way back, and uh, you are... Well, I, I guess you call what you do sales magic, which is great. It's it sounds interesting. Susan, do you, do you have any starting comments? Well, yes, and I, I I think that one way to start would you would be just to have Jackie tell us a little bit about her books and her programs that she has developed. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, well, thank you, Susan, and thank you, Rick. It's a delight to be here. And yes, I met Susan through some of our work in energy. So it has been an incredible experience. Susan gave us great advice, gave our clients great advice. And she's what we call one of our business champions. She's someone who absolutely can make a big difference in looking at the future of where an industry is going and where an industry is. And so in my books, Own Your Value and Transformational Growth, I was really focused on capturing stories from people like Susan and showing our methodology and what our business champion sales methodology is about is we focus on prospecting and that's the most mm. difficult piece of sailing. I mean, when you talk to a salesperson there, everyone's about getting new clients and how do I do it today in the digital age? And so we have an online course to show people how to do that at Business Champion Sales. And what makes our work so, so different is we provide a very fresh approach that is unique, but I think those are just sort of buzzwords when you think about it. It's the difference maker is that we engage people to look at the heart-to-heart -heart connection they have with their prospects and to see where they can make a long-term difference in the business or career trajectory of their prospects. And that's why we call them business champions. That's, you know, it's interesting because prospecting is something most salespeople either hate or love. It's, it's hard <laughs> to find that in between spot and cold calling that horrible old word cold calling. Now it's cold emailing which I don't know if that's worse than cold calling sometimes. Um, <laughs> how, how do people adjust today to, to really sales has changed quite a bit. The basic parts of sales, I think, are still the same. But how do, how do people really deal with the, the newer parts of sales where people rely a lot on sales lists, email marketing, and you wind up in spam folders all the time? What, what, what's your approach to, to sales today? Well, thank you. And, you know, Rick, that doesn't work. Cold calling doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And we've tried it. I, I have the documentation. I can show you and show you comparative to our work. What works is having a personal brand and having a message that's really clear on what you bring to the market personally and then what your company brings to the market and what your product and services bring. So you have a three part or trifecta in your communication strategy. And then you look for people that 
are making a difference. And that's why I call them business champions is people who can make a decision, who see and look into the future, who are imagining what could be and who are experts and well connected in their own industry. And rather than just thinking of them as a target, which doesn't work, you think about it as a personal relationship and a connection. So we do a lot of, we teach a lot of direct messaging communications and looking for that very personal connection that makes you um, stand out. It's because if you, if you just send an email or just make a cold call, there's no connection there. And so you've got to start first with how you connect and then you do the research on the industry for industry leaders. And then you can really get very clear on how you can make a difference for that person. And, you know, we have such a big digital footprint. We really don't like to think about it, but we do. And in our work, and in our consulting, we also use artificial intelligence in our work. Mm. So we're using current tools to get you smarter, to get you more informed, and to make your life much, much more successful in increasing revenues. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I really like that. And can you give us one specific example of, of, of a person or individual? Like sure. That sure, I'd love to, Susan. So, um, you know, one a, a great person to to think about uh, in doing this. I, I just think about have a client right now. In fact, that's how you know we connected, Susan. Um, it's the client is a former. Her name is Lorraine Kwai. And she's a former FBI special agent. And her program is called Secrets of a Strong Mind. So she does online learning. That is her entire focus. And she does some talks. Okay. Oh, that's, I think that um, she's frozen. Jackie's frozen. Oh, did she get knocked out? Oh, bummer. Um, this is a live show. It happens. Wow. Um, well, okay. So I'll talk about, why don't we go ahead and, and maybe we'll, she'll try to get back in, but why don't you and I talk about what we know about her approach and the concept? And what yeah. do you think about the idea that direct email doesn't work? I agree. I agree. We've tried that several times in over the last decade or more, and the results were always the same nothing nothing we sent out 30,000 emails to to basically the same group the, the group was probably about 10,000 we sent out 30,000 different emails there it was a very personal friendly not salesy email per se it was just more about talking about relationships and talking about um, how we can make things better for their company or what we can do, what we can help them with, what kind of problems do they have, if you want to talk about it, blah, blah, blah. And, and it was short. You don't want people reading too much and they're not going to. And the result was, I think, one referral to to actually somebody higher up, and that was nice. No no response back from the referral. And then we got another one which wanted, was looking for a job. That was okay. And that's it. There was almost no, so 30,000 emails go out at different times, and the response was, I think, two, nothing. Years ago, when we tried that, maybe about 15, 20 years ago, um, we had a much better response back then. Same kind of approach, short email, pretty personal. Uh, again, probably 10 or 20 out of maybe five or 10,000 emails. So, well, that's crazy. Um, and, I wonder, and, like, this is just a. I wonder if we could change the shot because we're still on just the frozen shot. Can we go to the two uh, shot sure. with? Um, sure. Yeah. Let's with, go over here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so go ahead. Yeah. So, so yeah, we didn't find it very useful, and and in most cases, 
depending on what corporate email you're using for someone, you may wind up in spam because they haven't approved you yet. There's a lot of that. Um, So that part of it is, I would say, much less rewarding than cold calls, especially if it's a cold call where you may have someone you know at a company or you do know the person. It's just that you're cold calling them in terms of something else. I don't think cold calling works either. We We've tried that with... At one point, we had three salespeople all doing cold calling, and we were targeting instructional designers, and that was uh, not not good. I think Jackie got back in. Jackie, you're back with us. Thank you. Yes. Uh, The old internet does wonders, doesn't it? Sometimes. (laughs) Sure. So sorry about that. I didn't realize you 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 guys were having a good conversation. All of a sudden, it got quiet. We went. What happened? Um, yes, I think you were froze. talking with with Susan about um, the, how cold calls. Don't yeah, the work. cold and calling and heart to heart connection. <clears throat> and, and I was telling Susan just to fill in some space there. Our experiences with with cold calling at one point this this is about fifteen twenty years ago. It, it was okay. We actually sold. I mean, believe it or not, we sold at that time probably about seven hundred thousand from cold calling, selling services and products. But it wasn't something we could repeat easily. Once you sold it, there wasn't much else happening in that particular space, which which was the e-learning online training space, at least as far as products went. And the industry went through some changes too. Then we tried emailing. Well, that was even worse. I think we sent out to a list of about 10,000 people, which we knew some, but not all. Um, uh, I think a, a very nice, friendly, personal letter. It was it was sales focused, but it wasn't. It was more about them, about them, and and what their needs were, and if we could help. I think out of thirty thousand letters sent out, there was probably one or two responses. That was it, and the responses were one person recommended somebody else, and one was looking for a job. And I went, well, it was useful. <laughs> Um, so going to your point, it, it really, that, those methods just don't work well. And we didn't spend too much time on them, but it was a quick, wow, that didn't work. Um, and, and cold calling today, it's hard to get to anybody unless you really have a name and number that you know, they're probably, you're probably not going to get past the administrative assistance or anybody else to get to talk to someone. Sometimes you can, but it's not that easy. Well, it's it's about having a relationship. I, I'll give you an example mm-hmm. of one um, that we we worked on. We worked with a um, a very complex, very large um, IT company. They provide internet services and all kinds of services are very big, and their sales team had been really successful at making relationships with key accounts. And so what we did for them is show them how to find the people who were key influencers, who could make a difference, who could access other budgets. Mm. And so what we did, I'll I'll give you an example of one particular executive. We connected with, with this executive and what we said is that we knew in LinkedIn what the executive's name was. I mean, in the title. And so we connected and I saw that with this particular executive, there were conferences and things that we participated in together. We had a similar interest. And so when I contacted him, I said, you know, we have a lot of mutual connections. I'm very interested in talking with you about new ways to lower your operations cost and improve your productivity and reduce your employee turnover. Because I knew those were three big things that he was facing. You could see it from his LinkedIn profile. And it was from research I'd done on the industry. And this is in the midstream industry. So I knew that there were big challenges there. When I contacted him on LinkedIn, he said, I'd love to meet with you. Yes, join my network and let's talk. So immediately we had a connection and we brought in so our job was to bring in the it company to talk with them and we did and that resulted in at least 15 other relationships he Mm -hmm. referred us to 
So what happened for us is really understanding their industry, understanding what was going on, making it very personal. Sure. And with this methodology, we changed our LinkedIn profile. I changed my LinkedIn profile. I We had a brand specialist that we work with, and her name is Stacy Hall, and she reworked the LinkedIn profile of you know clients. And so what happened is by communicating, there was a definite connection. Rather than what could have taken me you know, in the past, because I've done cold calling in the past personally, and my teams have, and we've certainly tried all of it. But what we found is this connection and really understanding the business before we got into it mm -hmm. and understanding what would be important to that person. Six out of seven mm -hmm. times I try to connect with someone, I get an appointment. So six out of seven. Right. So my success rate went from one out of... 30,000 in the example you gave to six out of seven. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm higher up in the organization. I'm meeting with, you know, a VP of operations, which mm -hmm. I needed to meet with. Our client was thrilled. We showed them the connection. They made the connection and it improved the business immediately. You know, turnover was less. They made major changes it opened new doors, it lowered cost, and it resulted in our clients selling another $8 million. That's great. So, you know, and the sales cycle was only, the sales cycle on that was only 90 days compared to two to three years sometimes on mm -hmm. some of these kinds of sales. Yeah. So it, it, it makes you relevant when you do your homework. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that makes that makes total sense, and and it's interesting because you mentioned LinkedIn and LinkedIn before. I'll I'll say before because it's changing a little bit right now because LinkedIn has become swamped with marketing people, I mean, mm -hmm. just swamped, and some of them have good intro messages and then you read and then you go oh wait this is i know what this is and and sure enough if you get back with them it's it's a it's basically a, a linkedin cold call if you will um but it's but it's real interesting because that makes it harder on linkedin at least for a lot of people to connect like they used to because now they're getting filtered even more quickly because of all the spamming going on that's that's it's just a, a linkedin issue i think but but I think you're right. LinkedIn is a great way to, if you, especially if you have a contact or somebody you already know, it can open a lot of doors, and like like you just showed and, and improved. And it's it's a real good idea. I think that was the original purpose of LinkedIn. It kind of switched a little bit. Um, the the target groups aren't as easy to get to sometimes. Though it is if, if what's what is it, if you pay fifty bucks a month or something like that, then you can talk yep. to anybody. You don't have to worry about connections. Uh, it's it's interesting how that's changed. That's probably part of the reason we have so much spamming. But how how do you go about, or how what would you recommend to someone to of getting to know somebody? Because a lot of people aren't leaders in an industry, and they don't. And a lot of people are afraid of talking to industry leaders, which is sort of interesting. We, we've, like, for example, in our company, we've worked with um, a lot of Fortune 500 companies. That are mostly we've had very large clients, and people always say, "You guys aren't that big a company. How do you do it?" And I said, "Well, we're not afraid of big clients. Afraid? I don't want to talk to a big client. I'm nervous. I." I mean, we're just a small company. I go, no, the big clients are the best. It's not that hard to work with them. They're easier. They have yeah. better budgets. They're easier to work with. You talk to a very small company, and money is extremely precious. They're not going to let go of it very quickly, especially if you're doing large services or something else. So it's, But it's interesting. Those are some of the, the fallacies people think of, fear. fear. Fear fear, is just a wonderful ally for everybody. And they just don't move forward on that. Now, I think your method is, is spot on. It's like the, the best kind of method you could have. If you have good connections and you care about their business and you're aware of what their business does, it, you can't lose. It's almost impossible to lose. Um, but a lot of people, like you mentioned, you do your homework. A lot of people don't do the homework. Uh, they don't yeah. 
find out about the clients or anything else. Um, how do you get people in that mindset to change the fear habit and also the the lack of doing their their upfront homework and learning more about the company so that when you go there, the company feels, oh, you know something about this. And then there's an immediate connection. Well, we ask questions and I think that that makes the big difference. So mm -hmm. when you ask questions about what the values are and you align with the three values that that person might have, mm -hmm. it makes a tremendous difference. Sure. Uh, because if you, uh, for me, you know, one of my big values is being trustworthy, you know, doing what you say and saying what you do. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I definitely have to have fun in my life. I, I have yeah. to have fun. That's just <laughs> a big value for me. And so, you know, I think it's taking the time to go deep within and asking those questions of yourself and not everyone is our client, Rick, you know, that's what I know. Right. <laughs> and I think that's the fallacy that some people think, oh, everybody could buy from me. Well, no, that's not true. No. So it's going deep and really looking at the values and who you want to work with and aligning yourself with people that live those values. And that makes a huge difference. So, you know, when you look at how do we do it, you know, we get brought in by one big champion, mm -hmm. one advocate. I think about a big ESG project we're working on now. You get invited in, and that's what, you know, people talk about. And Peter Drucker, I mean, one of the founders of managed, modern management talked mm -hmm. about that. And you've got to be invited in. And so once you get invited in, the person wants to change. And right now, with the economy changing and all the things around us changing with technology, we all have to want to change. And there is a lot of fear around it. And you either come from fear or love. And if you love yourself enough to live your values, and it's important to you, it has to matter. And so this is a real different approach. We get asked people to ask these questions of themselves and to go deep. And that makes a big difference. I mean, in the, when, when I think about the first way that I thought about doing this work and how I created it, you know, I looked at what was important to me in my life. And the question, I was working with a mentor her name's Edwin Gaines, and she's a, a wild woman. She's, <laughs> which is interesting. She wrote this book that was on Oprah's uh, reading list called the seven, uh, no, the four uh, laws, spiritual laws of abundance. And mm. she asked me, it's not, will I, if I die tomorrow, how am I going to live? It's if I live 30 more years, how am I going to live? And so the question of if I'm going to be on this planet 30 more years, how do I want to live my life? And who are the people I want to work with? And who are the clients I want to surround myself with? It makes a huge difference in, in our work and who we are and how we show up. And that gives us courage because if you, you've got to have something pulling you forward, you know, I think Matthew McConaughey in his book, Green Lights, talks about that. Um, and I love that book because it, it made me think about what are the green lights in my life? When did I get the, the go signal, the, the mm -hmm. thing that pulled me forward? And if you have values and goals, then your life, you're pulling forward and it's worth the pain of maybe being a little embarrassed. And, you know, I've done a lot of things to embarrass myself. So <laughs> I live, <laughs> you know, and I figure if I can live through embarrassment, okay, fine. If, if I talk with someone or connect with someone and they say, no, thank you. Or they say, I'm not interested. You know, I still spend time. I try to spend time every week 
selling. And that's real important to me because I want to continue to sharpen my skills, continue to improve, and I continue to do personal development. And I, I'm always being pulled forward. That's probably about 1% of the population. When I look at a sales force or work with a sales mm -hmm. team or a group of professionals or engineers who are, or geologists who are absolutely brilliant scientists, maybe 10% of them have that professional capability to sell and do consulting work or, right. and do, you know, that very technical work. So you've got 90% of the people that could do something a little different and launch something new. If they have a brilliant idea, they've got to launch it. And so that's a great <laughs> way to get people to start to think about what's really important to me and how am I going to move it forward? The ability to sell, it, it outpaces all other organizations. There's, I mean, there are products, services, books, so many great things that are done and inventors and, and they come to us and they've done great work. The challenge is how do you market it? How do you communicate about it? And how do you sell it? And that's right. the big difference maker. Now you said something earlier, which I totally 100% agree with. You're trustworthy. When that is one of the hardest things for people to understand that in sales, especially that it's not just what you're selling, it's you're, you're selling yourself too and, and you have to have people trust you because then you're not selling. It becomes a very easy transaction between two people who really trust each other or feel that the knowledge you have is really worth something. And then at that point, the sale done, you haven't had to do a heck of a lot of work and, and everybody's happy at the end of the day. Uh, I'll add to your trustworthiness and I've, I've told clients this many times. I said, not only do you have to be trustworthy, but you have to go to bed at night feeling good about yourself because if you don't, you know, you've done something wrong. And um, and it's just a, a good way to look at life, I think. Um, I love the way that you use the trustworthiness. And of course, you know what you're doing. But to have that trustworthiness, to have people say, yeah, I, I believe you. I trust you. We had one client recently which was, was sort of interesting. She knew of us and I, I went in and she goes I, I want a quote I said we'll give you a quote but what exactly do you need and she goes well, I don't then blah 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 and I said oh well yeah we can do that we've done this this and this and she went well how long would it take it would take about this long oh okay and so we want a whole series of questions and at one point she goes I totally trust you I'm good send me the quote let's do it I'm, 20 minute conversation and and we went okay we did and we finished a project she came back a couple of weeks ago for another version of a project and we went great it's, and, and so you build through that trust and and that's what i'm loving about what i'm hearing about your method and the way you approach it uh it just sounds like a, like a really good win-win thank you thank you yeah that is a great way to do it Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I agree with everything that you're saying. And I think also that just to, to reinforce the point about um, really going in and connecting with research to figure out, I know a lot of people call it pain points, but and, and fixing the pain points. But I, I like your approach is the opportunity points. Where can you match make and say, can I really deliver something and don't over promise. I mean, like mm -hmm. a lot of people come in and they say, they, they identify pain points or they identify opportunities. Yeah, I'd like to do that. But then it's just too much. And um, I think that that's finding out um, and being honest with yourself is really key. That's true. Thank you, Susan. I agree with that. It's it's fun, and we're almost out of time. So, Jackie, what's a good way for people to get a hold of you? Well, the easiest way is just um, send an email, Jackie at JackieLiles.com. And if you want to learn more about me, look at my profile on LinkedIn on Jackie Lyles, or just um, go to Amazon. You can 
own your value or buy one of those books that's helpful or just go to businesschampionsales.com and you can go through it i mean we have a new promotion we're running so it's 97 dollars for the really the starter kit so you can get that and get started on really how to understand the five steps of becoming a business champion and the five steps that you'll need to increase your sales. So I would encourage you all to do that and read more about it. And I post a lot and also sales magic is our podcast and that's completely free. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can listen to sales magic. That's great. Well, we'll put links down below uh, in our when we publish a video to all those sites. So you can go definitely do check that out and um, visit the site spots. That's a really well valued um, intro uh, um, series too. So good stuff there. <clears throat> anyway, Jackie, it's been a pleasure meeting you and talking a little bit about what you do. I know we're only touching the surface. Um, we don't need to do so much in half hour, but we'd love to have you come back on again, maybe cover some other aspects of, of what you do. I think it'd be fun. I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you all. Have a great day. Appreciate well, it. Well, thank you very much. No, thank and, you. And Susan, yeah, thanks. Okay. And we will see you all next week on EBIS Chat. Have a good one, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.